Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. We've got a really cool project for you guys today. We're going to 3D print and assemble a violin. This is the Hovalin, a fully 3D printed violin, a fully working musical instrument. And we're going to show you how we put ours together today, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here on the Print 3D channel. Like I was saying in the introduction, we have a really cool project for you guys today. We're going to 3D print and assemble a working musical instrument, a violin, otherwise known as the Hovalin. Now there are two versions available, version 3 and version 4, and as you can see, we've printed both of them. We've done the full assembly on version 4, and I'm going to show you step by step how we did it. For this print, we're going to be using the G-Create G-Max 1.5 XT Plus with its massive build volume. It also has a BL Touch, an E3D hot end, and it has a filament runout sensor because this is a long print. For the filament for this project, we're going to use Kodak's PLA Tough. Now I've been printing with this filament for quite some time, and I think it's perfect for a violin. So the first thing we need to do is we need to head over to Hovalab's website and download the files we need for the prints. After that, we'll bring everything over into Simplify 3D and set up the parameters for the prints. Then we'll send the files over to the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus for printing, and then we'll start assembling. But first, let's check out this graphic I prepared that shows you all the print parameters for the project, how the support material needs to be removed, and exactly how the two pieces go together for version 4. As you can see in this graphic, the chamber print is a very unique print with built-in support material, and you can also see my layer height, infill, and perimeter settings. Once you've broken the support pieces free, you can set the chamber piece aside and address the neck. It has some small lily pads in each of the corners and in the middle, and there are my layer heights, infill, and perimeters for this part. Once everything is cleaned up, the two parts slide together very nicely, and you can insert your carbon fiber rod, install your tuner pegs and strings, tune this up, and you're ready to play. Okay, so here we are at hovalabs.com, and I'll put that link down in the description. And you can check out all the things that the fine folks at Hovalabs are doing. Scroll down through the website, check out all their information. But what we're going to focus on today is their project. So we're going to click on the project link, and right here at the top is the Hovalin. So we'll click on Hovalin and we'll go on to make one. Now there's a lot of really great information about what they're doing at Hova Labs and you can read through that. But we want to focus today is on printing and assembling our Hovalin. So if you're looking to do version 3.1.0, you can click on this link, but we're doing 4.0.0, so we can download these files here. Another thing that's very important, is you scroll down here, there's a shopping list. Now you're going to need these extra bits and pieces here to assemble and play your, or your Hovalin when you're done printing it. And that includes the tuner, the rosin, the strings, the carbon fiber rods, and the bow. And of course, some assorted grits of sandpaper to sand down the neck once you get it printed. Now there is some information here about 3D printing, and if you're familiar with 3D printing, you should probably already know a lot of this information, but there is some valuable information that you should read here about the build volume. And again, I've mentioned this before, you are going to need a printer with a large build volume depending on the version you print. The neck is going to need a lot of XY, where the body or the chamber, depending on which version you print, will only need a certain amount of Z for version 3, and of course at least 360 millimeters for the very tall part, which is in version 4. Now if you scroll down a little bit more, you can find some information about the print parameters for each of the parts that you're going to need to print for version 4, and that includes your layer height, your infill, and your perimeters. It also gives you a rough estimate time for print hours and how much plastic you're going to use. And there is a little bit of note here that says you should be able to do this with a single roll of plastic, depending on the roll of plastic that you get. Now it's important to note that these parameters are the tried and true print parameters that they've used, so you might want to follow these as close as possible, depending on the settings that you use with your 3D printer. If you scroll down a little bit more, there's a little note here about sanding the fretboard. And like I said, it's super important that you get multiple grits of sandpaper so you can sand this down so it's super smooth and you won't have any buzzing when you're using, uh, when you have the strings pressed on the fretboard. The next part is about installing the tuner pegs. Now this is super important as well because you're going to have to break off a piece of the tuner pegs after you get them. Now I believe these are guitar tuner pegs that have been used to fit into a violin but that's just fine. It works just great, and I'll show you how we do that in the assembly. Once you have everything set up, you can put the two pieces together and slide in the carbon fiber rod, and then you're ready to install your strings, tune your violin, rosin up your bow, and play. So let's head over to Simplify 3D, and I'll show you my settings for our prints. 
Okay, so here we are in Simplify 3D, and I've already dropped down the chamber model for version 4 down on the print bed, and I've also added some lily pads or helper discs around the four corners and in the middle just to make sure that the support piece that's built into the model stays secure to the bed because this is a long print. Now, let me show you my process settings for this print. For infill amount, you can see right off the top there, I am I'm using 30%. For layer height for this print, we did a 0.28 millimeter layer height with three top layers, three bottom layers, and two perimeters. We also ran a skirt at six millimeters from the model and at six outlines. And we did use, like I said, 30% infill using the fast honeycomb method. We didn't generate any support material because the support material is already built in. Now we're using Codex PLA Tough, so these are the temperature settings I have set up for that particular filament. For the cooling, we don't have the G-Max fully maxed out for this particular print. We're only going up to 75%. Under speed, we're running it at 50 millimeters per second, and you can see my variables set up for different parts of the outline and infill. And under the advanced tab, we are activating the allow single extrusion fill under the thin wall behavior. So if we hit OK here, and we hit prepare to print, we can slice up the model, and I can show you how this built-in support material is set up within the model and how it's going to print and create a bit of a cradle for the model to print in, which is very unique and very cool. So there's our slice, and that was all in real time. Now if we dial this back down to the bottom here, and we zoom in, you can see here on the bottom that it prints out the support material first, and then it be begins to print the Hovelin chamber piece. And the entire piece is built on that support cradle, which is very unique and very awesome. It's also very cool at the same time. And then as we get further up the model, you can see that there's some small support material being generated here where the holes are, where the sound holes are. And then when we come up here for the ornate design of the body, there's some support material built in on both sides. So if we move the model down and we scroll up here through the layers, you can see that support material finish off. And then the top of the chamber will close up by itself. This is a very, very cool model. It's going to take about 17 hours and 54 minutes that's a rough estimate and it's going to use 441 grams of material which isn't too bad it's pretty close to that almost 500 grams of material that the specifications on the hobo lab site said so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and exit out of here and let's open up the neck file and i can show you the settings for that now we didn't add any extras to this because it already has some built-in lily pads on either end of the model and in the center and if i go to the top view and zoom in here I've straightened out the model as best as I can so I get a nice straight line when we start doing the neck area where the fretboard is. Now the settings for here are, again we're using a 30% infill and under the layer height we're only doing a 0.2 millimeter layer height with four top layers, four bottom layers, and three perimeters. We're also running our skirt as a brim at eight outlines to really secure it down to the print bed. Again, 30% infill, fast honeycomb, no support generated, Here's our temperatures again for the Kodak PLA Tough. We're not maxing out our cooling on our G-Max, and our speeds are 45 millimeters per second. And here you can see my offsets and different percentages that I've used for the outline and the solid infill. And of course, allow single extrusion fill under thin wall behavior, one of my favorite settings in Simplify 3D. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and hit OK and hit Prepare to Print. Now this should slice pretty quick. And you can see how this prints out with its built-in lily pads, which you'll have to trim off. And I'll show you that in the assembly part. And here's where you can see the carbon fiber rod uh, section going to be built into the model. And there's also a section within the body or the chamber part that also supports that carbon fiber rod. And if you come around to this side, let's move it up. You can see I'll have a nice smooth surface here to really do some great sanding on. And of course, I at the 0.2 millimeter layer height, it's going to remove as much of that stair stepping as possible. Now you could go to a lower layer height, but you're going to use more plastic and obviously it's going to take a lot longer to print. And again, here's our build time at six hours and two minutes and it's using just over 100 grams. So we're pretty close to that 500, 550, 560 grams of material. So not too bad, less than a full roll. So let's go ahead and send over our files to the GMAX and let's get this printed.
first thing we'll need to clean up is the neck pieces. And there's some helper discs or lily pads in three different parts of the neck. And we can easily clip those free with some side cutters or flush cutters. Now you wanna be careful not to damage the neck in any way. So be very careful when you start to clean this neck part up around the fretboard. A little tip here, when you want to clip a piece free so it doesn't fly off and hit you in the face, just cover it up with your free hand or your thumb. Now addressing the head part of the neck where the tuner pegs are going to go, you want to be careful here and clean this up very, very carefully because you don't really want to have any surface finish marring. You want this to be very clean. And again, cover up the pieces so they don't fly off. Once you're happy with your initial cleanup, it's time to start sanding. And you want to do a little bit of sanding on all the different parts of the neck, but you really want to address that fretboard. That's going to be the most important part because that's going to be where your hand is sliding up and down while you're playing the hobel in. The first thing I used was some 100 grit sandpaper just to get rid of some of the stair stepping along the edge there. Keep a cloth handy so you can wipe away some of that PLA dust because it will build up on the print and make it difficult to sand. Now once you get this to your satisfaction, you can start working on the fretboard. Now that I have it basically sanded the way I like it, I'm going to start doing some basic sanding on the fretboard. Now your first instinct is going to be a go along the grain of the, of the print, but what you really want to do is follow the contour of the fretboard itself so you get some even sanding. And there is a lot of sanding to do. You really want this to be very, very smooth because like I said, this is where your hand is going to be sliding along while you're playing. And remember to keep a cloth handy so you can wipe away that PLA dust. The next thing I'm going to address is the holes where the strings slide through and attach to the tuner pegs. Now I just want to make sure that these are perfectly clean. And I know my GMAX did a stellar job because I can see some light through them. But I do want to clean up any burrs from the layer changes that are in there. And for that, I'm going to use a really small round file for this. I also have an X-Acto knife I'm going to work with later. So let's start with the tuner peg holes and get those all cleaned up because those are where all your tuner pegs are going to mount. You want those to be really, really clean. After that, let's go ahead and address the bridge area at the top of the neck and those small holes. Now I'm doing this very gently because I don't want to mar up the finish and I don't want to leave any sharp edges behind either. Even though I'm going to be using steel strings, there is a chance that they could cut it because this is Kodak's PLA tough filament. And for some final cleanup, I'm just going to use a, an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife to clean out some of those other burrs that are still left over in the holes. Now that I'm happy with the way the string holes are going to be set up for the strings, I'm definitely going to give this fretboard a lot more sanding. And I'm going to use a couple of different grits of sandpaper to do this. I'm going to start with some 100 grit, and then I'm going to move up to 200 grit, and then up to 320 grit. And again, you want to follow the contour of the fretboard. That way it gives it a nice, smooth, even finish all the way across. And just remember to have a cloth handy so you can wipe away some of that grit. And again, a lot of sanding is going to take place to make sure your fretboard is really, really smooth. And I worked my way up all the way up to 320 grit before I was really happy with the finish. Once you wipe away the dust, you'll be able to see how smooth it is. I think this looks really good and I'm ready to put the rest of the hovel in together. Now that we have that out of the way, the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to remove all the support material from the chamber. Now, this is going to prove to be a little bit challenging. What you're going to need to do first is remove the bottom cradle part, and then you'll probably want to remove those side pieces, and then move, remove the inserts. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use my favorite tool for 3D printing, and that is a frosting spreader. This was able to get in between the parts of the cradle and the actual body of the Hovelin so I could pull the chamber cradle free and not mar the finish up too much. Now this did take a little bit of effort to get this free, 
But once I got it to a certain point, there was that satisfying crack of plastic. And I knew I could probably just peel the rest of this off and use my other tools like a pair of pliers or some channel locks, which I'll show you I had to use later. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of scarring on the finish there, but remember, this was built completely on support material. I'll probably sand off some of those burrs, but I do like the fact that it did come out solid and there are no holes in it, and that was my major concern. So the next part was pulling apart the side support materials. And the easiest way to do this was to take my cutters and break apart the support material and then grab those channel locks that I had handy and just break these pieces free. Now it did take a little bit of effort and I was super cautious that I was going to crush my hovelin because again, this is a single print. But those side support materials managed to break free and I was able to clean up any other little parts I did the same for both sides, grab my channel locks and break free those big pieces. This one took a little bit of effort because I was really worried about breaking the whole chamber piece itself. Kodak's PLA tough filament is some really strong filament, but there's only a few perimeters here and it could collapse. So that was my biggest concern. So definitely handle this carefully. But once you get those pieces free, you can break apart all the little burrs that are left behind. Now for the inserts around the scroll, I knew these were going to break. I already saw that there was a little seam break there and you can see that here in the video. So the, I tried to salvage this as best as I could and whatever happens, happens because the rest of the model or the rest of the print turned out great and I knew that whatever was I was left with once these little pieces broke free, I would try and match them on either side so at least it would be consistent. And of course I was right, those pieces did break free. I did save the little pieces because I thought maybe I would super glue them in, but I, that would definitely ruin the look of it and it'd be really hard to line those up. So I just took my time breaking away the inserts of the support material, knowing that I would most likely have to break that and I actually saw it break and I knew, well, the best I could do was match both sides so they looked consistent on both sides. Here's all the hardware we're going to need for the tuner pegs. When you buy a pack of these, you're going to get six, but you actually only need four. Now there's one thing we need to do, and it's in the instructions on the Hovelabs website, is break off that little tab that's on the side there. Now I already broke one off just to make sure I could actually do it, and I, couldn't, and I wouldn't destroy the tuner peg itself. These are made of metal, but there are some plastic parts in them. So keep yourself handy a couple of pairs of pliers. You don't really want to mar up the finish on these tuner pegs, but you have to pull these pegs and they have to pull these little tabs off of the pegs for them all to fit into the head of the neck. And make sure you keep your tuner pegs organized. They are in a color-coded bag according to the way I bought my, my set. Now take your time with this and be very careful because you don't want to crack the whole tuner peg assembly itself. You want to make sure that that breaks off clean. And before I go any further, safety first. If you're gonna hold on to these small tuner pegs and break off a piece of metal, you're better off wearing some sort of protective gloves to protect your hands. And breaking off the smaller pieces took a little bit of effort, but I was able to get them all off pretty cleanly and pretty evenly. Now I would paint over these just to cover up the white metal that it, that's exposed after breaking off the tabs, but they are gonna be hidden away because they are going to be tightly assembled into the head of the neck. Now that I have all the tuner pegs ready for inserting into the neck itself, the only thing you're going to need is a small wrench. Slide all the tuner pegs into the holes and just put them in the corresponding way. You can follow along here or you can look on Hovelab's website and they can show you the configuration as well. Once you have them all inserted, flip it over and then slide in the small coupler nuts that go in. Now these are sleeve style and they'll be really easy to finger tighten to a point where you can get them all assembled and you can let go of the back. 
Then finally tighten them down with your wrench. Now don't go too far, you don't want to hear that plastic cracking, but you do want them to be tight enough so that they hold the tuner pegs in place. Once all the tuner pegs were tightened up, it was time to install the strings, and I was getting excited because we were getting closer to playing our hobelin. So the first thing we need to do, obviously, is assemble the two pieces, and they slide together very easily. Now you might need to sand up the area because remember, there was a lily pad holding that part of the neck down. Once you have the two parts slid together, insert the carbon fiber rod until it stops, and it will stop at the top of the neck. And there you have it. It's assembled in its basic form. The next thing we obviously need to do is install the strings and get it ready for playing. I think the print turned out good. I am super happy with the results. I might remove the strings at some point and do some more sanding on the neck, but I'm pretty happy with the fretboard as it is now. Now the strings that I purchased are the Prelude Diodaro Violin Strings in 4-4 scale, and these are steel core strings. And they're also color-coded, so they're really easy to install onto your hobelin. And you'll want to install these in the proper order. And if you're unsure, I put a link down in the description so you can see the proper installation of strings for any violin. Now carefully insert these through the bottom section of the hobelin until the string pops out through the top. Now what I did was install the strings through the bottom part of the hobelin first before I strung them through the top part of the nut and then into the, into the tuner pegs. The first thing I did was install all the strings in order so I didn't get them all mixed up. I didn't want to completely attach them all the way up to the tuner pegs until I had them all in order attached to my hobelin. And they will prove a little challenging because remember this is a bit of a curve through the body of the hobelin print. Just pull the strings all the way forward until the little nut on the end of the string slides into the larger hole. Now take your time doing this. You want to make sure that you insert these all in the same order that you inserted them at the bottom and put them in the correct order going into the tuner pegs. And again, I'll put a link down in the description that shows the proper installation of strings. Now that I had all the strings installed through the top part of the neck, it was time to wind them through into the tuner peg holes. Now this will prove a little bit challenging since they are metal strings, and you do have the carbon fiber rod, which is pushed through the center of it. I think you could probably pull the carbon fiber rod because it isn't glued in until you install the strings, but I definitely wouldn't tighten up the strings until you reinstalled your carbon fiber rod. Now take your time to make sure that the strings wind properly around each of the tuning pegs. Make sure these are wound properly around the tuning pegs because you don't want the string to pop loose while you're tuning your hobelin. And again, it may take a little bit of effort to get these properly wound, but once you do, the strings will tighten up nicely. Now 
Now that we have the strings installed, it's time to tune our Hogolin. And I found some really cool apps online, and I'll show you one of the ones that I downloaded, and I'll put that link down in the description. It is a free app with banner ads. But of all the apps that I downloaded, this one seemed to be the most effective and had the best tone. And again, I am super happy with the way this print turned out. This single piece chamber print for version four looks amazing in this Kodak PLA tough filament. So here's the app that I'm using to tune this. And it's really easy. You just select a string, finger pluck it, and tune it until the little green arrow shows up in the center. And just move across each of the strings one at a time until you get them all tuned. And this seems to be the best app I found of all the ones that I downloaded because this one seems to really fluctuate in small increments when you're tuning so you can really get a precise sound out of your Hogolin. Just take your time and work through each string and remember to tighten or loosen. A really good practice is to loosen, tighten, and then loosen again, and then tighten. So you stretch the string out very slowly to get to that perfect tuned point. And again, I'll put the link down in the description so you can check out this app. And you may have your own tuning system, but I found that this one works really good and it's free. Now that we have our Hovelin all tuned up, it's time to rosin up our bow. Of course, you're gonna need some rosin. Now to rosin up your bow, push gently against the horsehair string and slowly move back and forth along the length of the horsehair until you get to the top and then repeat going the other direction. You can apply a little bit of pressure, but you don't wanna push down so hard that you break some of the horsehair. And just follow this procedure all the way up and down the bow until you get a nice coating of white powder on the strings because that's going to make all the strings make their sound. And this is very important. You must rosin up your bow before you play. I think we're ready to play a few songs. Let's check out how the Hobelin sounds. Well, the Hobelin sounds amazing, I just need a little bit more practice and I'm definitely going to keep at it. And this was a really fun project and we showed you every step of the process, including downloading the files from the Hobelabs website, slicing everything in Simplify 3D, and bringing everything over to the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus for printing using Kodak's PLA Tough Filament. After a little bit of cleanup and a whole lot of sanding, we assembled our Hobelin, inserting the carbon fiber rod, installing the tuner pegs, inserting the strings and tuning them, rosining up our bow and attempting to play it. Now I'm definitely going to keep practicing and I'll keep you guys posted up on social media if I learn a few more songs. 
And down in the description, you'll find links to everything that we purchased to assemble our Hovelin, including the links to the Hovelabs website so you can download the files yourself. I really hope you guys check out this project and build one yourself because this was really fun and I can't wait to learn some new songs. I hope you guys found this episode interesting and informative, and if you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out those affiliate links down in the description along with my Patreon page. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon.